Putting the Titan Aero on my Tornado was expensive and painful, but what if I told you you could upgrade your Ender 3 to direct drive with no firmware changes, no wiring changes for only 35 bucks. Previously, I put this Titan Aero on my Tornado and it was quite an ordeal. If you haven't seen the video, the steps required to install it just went on and on and on. On top of this is the price at well over US $100, but it does include a new hot end and extruder mechanism. There are some advantages to that system and my Tornado is still printing well, but there was a lot of downsides to deter a user from going down this path. Well, today I'm gonna to show you an alternative and it comes in at only US $35. This Ender 3 direct drive kit comes from Basarava Innovations and consists of CNC milled aluminium and a bunch of printed parts. It's so affordable because it retains the standard equipment in the hot end and the extruder. But one of the strengths is that you can change those components as well as fitting this kit. As you can see here, it's compatible with a bunch of different upgrades so you can do them in stages or all in one go if you wish. Specifically, you'll need less retraction, which means less stringing. It's got a much better filament path. So probably the main downside is moving the extruder, which on paper means more ringing as you up the print speed. I'm changing from the easier extruder, so I'm gonna miss the easy filament feeding from that. Firstly, a bit of homework. What is a direct drive extruder? A lot of 3D printers these days have the extruder separate to the hot end connected via a Bowden tube. On printers like the Prusa i3 Mark III on the right, you'll see that the extruder is directly on top of the hot end and therefore the filament has a direct path between the two. In the Titan Aero video, people asked how come a Bowden tube makes it harder to get retraction right. Hopefully this diagram can explain. On the top we have when everything is sitting idle, but if we have a really close tolerance between our filament and our PTFE tube, there's going to be added friction. Therefore we have to increase the tube diameter and this means the filament is free to flex as it's pushed from one side towards the hot end. Ultimately this is less precise, it makes it harder to get rid of stringing and a case in point is my before test prints. I picked this low poly Pikachu because it's fast to print and between the ears is an ideal place to see if there's any stringing. After a bit of tweaking, I had gotten rid of the stringing and had a baseline. Now that we've got that, let's proceed to fit the kit, starting with disassembly of the standard components. On the eBay link in the description, there is a full set of labeled instructions. So I'm just gonna make my video based off those. Refer to the instructions because they'll be the most up-to-date version. We're gonna start disassembly by removing the two screws that hold on the filament holder. After that, we're gonna undo the four bolts on the top of the frame and we're gonna remove that piece as well. Power down the printer and unplug the stepper motor for the extruder. Now we're gonna move the gantry up by manually turning the Z stepper motor rod and when it gets to the top, we're gonna to gently remove it off and place it on the bed of the printer. You can see I have an easier extruder, but the process will be the same for you. We're gonna remove the Bowden tube from the extruder as well as the hot end. Next up, we're gonna remove the extruder from the bracket on the gantry by undoing all of the screws. It's very important that you place the extruder, its nuts and bolts all together to the side because we're gonna be reusing it later on. Here I changed back the drive gear from my EZR to the original from the Ender 3. After that, we're going to remove the X-axis tensioner from the belt, remove it sideways out of the way. After this, we're gonna flip the gantry over 90 degrees and undo the bracket on the right-hand side by taking out the two screws. Again, be careful to make sure all the correct hardware stays with each part. After this, we can very carefully move the belt out of the way and we can roll out the assembly from the end of the X-axis gantry. If you need to remove the two belts, the only thing still attaching it should be the hot end wiring. Now we're gonna transport the rollers from the old carriage onto the new one. It's a good idea to do them one at a time and you should pay more attention than I did because I got the one down the bottom backwards. The roller down the bottom with the eccentric nut should be fed through from behind so the screw faces the front of the printer. We've got everything apart, so let's start to put things back together starting with the extruder. Take the extruder stepper motor and orientate it so the plug is to the left. Now we're gonna get the printed spacer plate, put it in position and then put the extruder body back so it's also facing to the left. The lower left hand screw is gonna go in to retain it and then after that the lever arm and spring, you're aiming to do these up tightly but not so tight that it can't move. Please check that everything moves freely now to avoid disassembly later on. Now we're gonna take the new X carriage and our motor spacer and place it in the only way it goes on the extruder. You flip it upside down and there's two supplied black bolts that come in from the rear to hold it into place. At this stage, I'm not gonna tighten mine up. If you ordered the optional E3D hot end mounting kit, you'll have a bigger motor spacer as well as the mount for the E3D hot end. 
these two will go into place instead of the other parts that you're seeing in my video. We now take the little hot end spacer, the little black part behind here, bolt on the hot end and then insert the PTFE tube. It's a short length, but we need to make sure that it's jammed in really nicely against the extruder. You can see here mine is a little bit too long. So I remove the extruder, I get my cutter and I cut off just a smidgen of the tube and then I retest. It took me about three goes to get it the exact right length but eventually I had it so that when the extruder is in place, there is zero chance of the tube backing off and creating clogs inside the nozzle. Once you've got this right, it is time to insert those screws holding on the extruder to the X carriage nice and tight so there's no chance of them coming loose and introducing wobble and artifacts into your prints. I'm showing the standard Creality hot end here, but it's also 100% compatible with the Micro Swiss or Metal hot end, just your PTFE tube will be shorter. In either case, there's room on the back for a printed extruder wheel, link in the description. To me, this is the perfect time to insert some filament, turn the extruder and make sure everything is aligned and you don't have any jams. If this is the case, you're ready to move on with the assembly. If you're using the standard shroud, fans and cooling duct, you'll find they'll bolt straight onto the new part and you're ready to continue with the rest of your assembly. If you're not using auto bed leveling and you're also using the stock fan duct, you can skip forward to later in the video for the rest of the assembly. For me, however, I was running a Hero Me aftermarket fan duct as well as a BL Touch. Unfortunately, there were some issues and I couldn't refit those exact parts. The new machined aluminium X carriage is too thick for the base to slide on. The printed spacer is also wider than the hot end. If you could get them in position, you'd see that the mounting holes are two millimeters offset. The cable holder and the cooling fan also collide with the new stepper motor position. Here is the remix of the Hero Me base that I've designed to combat all of these problems. When I overlay the new and the old part side by side, you can see I've made additions and changes in the areas that I needed to. This means that the part should fit and be easy to work with. In red here, we can see the new base that needs to be printed as well as the narrower hot end spacer. That took up a couple of days of my time and it took about five versions until I was happy that everything fit perfectly, but that means it's gonna be easy for you to use. So let's have a look at how to put this version back together. We reinstalled the hot end with the new narrower hot end spacer. After that, with this stepper motor not in place, we can slide the base down from above and it should have a really nice snug fit over the hot end. You can use whatever ABL mounting kit you were using from the Hero Me previously, clip it into place and then retain it to the X carriage with the two bolts that were originally there. If you weren't using auto bed leveling, simply use the blanking plate. Now's a great time to put your hot end cooling fan back in place and this Noctua is still working perfectly after quite a few weeks now. You can realign the PTFE tube and then secure the extruder to the X carriage for the final time. If you're using an extruder wheel, now is the time to push it into position and then take whatever cooling duct you were using previously for the Hero Me, slot it into place and retain it with the two M3 screws on the sides. Time to reinstall whatever part cooling fan that you were using. I'm still using the original 4010. My final step is to screw back on my BL touch. With this in place, our hot end and extruder assembly is complete. Now we've got our extruder and hot end combo back together, whatever version you're using. So let's move forward and reassemble the rest of the printer. We can start by sliding the X carriage back from the right hand side onto the X extrusion and then putting on the backing plate that has the wheels to align it on the Z vertical column. Reinstall the X belt tensioner, align the belts around it and then reach underneath and tuck them back into the matching slots on the new X carriage. Now you can pull the tensioner tight before using a hex key to tighten everything up so nothing can slip. Unless you love wiring, you would have ordered the kit with the extruder stepper motor extension. It's time to plug that into either end and ensure that it reaches to the full extent of the printer's travel. Reach for that top piece of frame and fasten down the bolts to put it back together. If you're not using the Hero Me, there's a part that bolts onto the extruder stepper to help hold the cables out of the way. There's two similar parts that go above the X-axis stepper as well as the Z stepper to hold the cables out of the way with cable ties. You can use the supplied cable wrap to go around your wiring, holding everything out of the way before you hold it in place with cable ties. Finally, I chose to rotate the spool holder 90 degrees and it seems plenty strong like this. As I promised with this mod, we do not need any firmware changes at all. In fact, the only change I made software wise was to lower the retraction value from five to one millimeter before I could run the same file again. Without any further slicer tuning, we've already matched our results from the before print, showing the potential of this modification. In fact, the main problem seen on the before and after test prints is a little bit of overheating on the face of the Pikachu, meaning it might be time to upgrade my part cooling fan. 
That brings us to the end of this one. The links for everything you need are in the description and I'd love for you to comment if this is a mod that you're interested in or have already tried. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, happy 3D printing. G'day, it's Michael again. If you liked the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.